Hey guys, welcome back, it's Matt here. And I recently did a video, maybe a month or two ago, about a vacuum cleaner, that was the Ecovacs 920. It's a $500 vacuum cleaner and it's quite expensive. So today we're gonna be taking a look at something a little bit lower, more price friendly. This price is in at $220, which is quite affordable, and it's called the Yidi K650. So this is another smart home vacuum cleaner. So without any further ado, we're just gonna go ahead and unbox it, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about it and tell you my overall opinion and some of the features that it does bring. Okay, so here's the box. It's gonna be pretty standard. I've unboxed a few of these, and there is an additional filter, so that's for putting into the cleaning part of the vacuum cleaner into the actual dust tray. This actually just filters out some of the air, and it also comes with an instruction manual, so you can go ahead and look up how to set the vacuum cleaner up and also how to actually change parts out. Underneath that is this sort of cardboard section, and this actually does go ahead and contain an additional brush. So the brush that comes with it is just standard with all the sort of bristles on it, but this one is a rubber one. So this is better for if you have pets that have lots of hair all around the house, and it will stop the vacuum cleaner from getting tangled up. And then underneath that is the vacuum cleaner itself. This is a white model, so I guess we'll see how that holds up over time. But right off the bat, it's very substantial. It's got some weight to it, and it does feel pretty premium. In the back of the box, we have this charging dock. There's two pins on here and two contacts on the vacuum cleaner. They line up when it goes ahead and docks and it charges up. So pretty standard stuff. You probably wanna put this in a very open place so the vacuum cleaner doesn't get confused. And then there's also a plug which is included depending on your region, but this one is a US adapter. And then hidden away in the bottom of the box is these side brushes. These basically spin around and they get lots of little bits of dirt and they sweep it in so the vacuum cleaner can suck it up because it can't get right near the edge with the actual intake part. So we're just gonna go ahead and put those on. Taking a look underneath, you can see there's a tank at the back which is just the dust tray and we can go ahead and put these side brushes on. They are color coded so we can easily just push those on. They are swappable and it does tell you when you need to change them so you can check that in the app. But yeah, once they're on, that's pretty much you set up in terms of hardware. There's also this removable cover in case you wanna switch out the brush like I mentioned. And then there's a switch at the back which allows you to pull out the tray and that's where you put in the filter. There's also a small tool in there in case you wanna, I don't know, get little bits of dirt out of the vacuum cleaner. And then on the side here, there is a power on switch as well as a reset button and a pairing button. So we can simply go ahead and just swipe that on. There's a QR code on top, which we can scan. That simply takes us to the store and allows us to download the app. The app is just called Yeti, so the same as the vacuum cleaner. And I'm just gonna go and install that. It looks like a pretty minimal app and it seems like it has loads of features to it. So we're gonna go ahead and set this up. It basically just asks you for your region and your language and then asks you to agree for some terms and conditions, just the usual stuff when you sign up for something. Now we're just gonna add our device, click QR code, and we're gonna go ahead and scan that QR code again on top of the vacuum cleaner. Once it's scanned, it goes ahead and pairs up. And once that's done, it does a little bit of setup and then you're good to go. It jumps right into the interface and you can go ahead and see the modes. You can start cleaning and you can already go ahead and jump in and configure all the settings. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the build quality and the overall look of the vacuum cleaner. So it is white, which is an acquired taste. It does sort of get dirty over time, I imagine. Most other vacuum cleaners out there tend to be darker colors purely because they're sort of cleaning up dirt and things and you don't want a vacuum cleaner that looks dirty, but it does look really nice in white when it's clean. So if you maintain it well, it should hold up okay. I'm pretty sure the top panel is like some sort of tempered glass or some sort of hard plastic. Um, but the whole vacuum cleaner is pretty substantial. It's pretty heavy. And you do have these sort of springs where the wheels go in and out. So there's some sort of suspension. It can go over like door frames and things with no issue. And small objects on the floor, it should be fine with. But overall, the build quality is good, especially for the price. It's pretty comparable to the other vacuum cleaner I reviewed for $500. Uh, the only real lack of sort of functionality that this has is there's no sensor on top. So for LiDAR, so in terms of how it navigates around, it basically uses this sort of bumper plate on the front and that's like the bumper detection. So it bumps into things and it kind of knows something is there and it maps that out. So next time it goes around, it won't bump into it anymore because it already knows it's bumped into something there. So there isn't sort of like a laser that spins or anything, purely just like knocks into things, but it's very subtle. It won't knock anything over. It's very, very light, the actual bumper. So um, it's a pretty good idea, I guess, if you're saving money to sort of build this thing and make it a bit more affordable. Something really nice which they included was an extra brush which you can go ahead and use. This is good if you have pets because it doesn't tangle up hair as much as the original one. And if you're curious about the overall power, there is a few different modes. There is a standard mode, a max mode, and a max plus 
which is actually capable of up to 2000 PA of suction power. So it's quite good for a small vacuum cleaner, especially in this price point. Um, but there is also a quiet mode. So they do brag that the quiet mode is around 56 decibels. So it's quite quiet, pretty much. You can actually hear the movement, like the actual motors themselves, moving the vacuum cleaner more than the suction power. Um, but it's very, very quiet. If you wanna run this thing, maybe late at night, you don't wanna wake people up, you can go ahead and use the quiet mode. Dustbin capacity is also pretty good. It's about 800 milliliters, which isn't the biggest in the world, but it's definitely comparable to other ones out there, other vacuum cleaners. And yeah, it kind of gets the job done. I mean, I don't live in like the biggest place in the world, so I need to change it maybe once or twice a week. Uh, but it really does depend on how much mess you make and the size of your house and how many rooms it's doing, everything like that. But 800 milliliters seems pretty good to me. It's not too much of a hassle just taking it out and emptying it once or twice a week. And there's also a filter, which apparently filters out 99% of all the sort of bacteria and everything you suck up. So all the air that comes out isn't gonna be filling your house with sort of dirty air, if that makes sense. So that's nice. They also included an additional filter. In terms of the vacuum cleaner actually going around and avoiding things, it's pretty good at static objects that don't really move. But when you're putting boxes down and you sort of leave your shoes at the door, it gets confused, it kind of bumps into it, and sort of gets confused a bit, but it does seem to continue and sort of make its way around that. But there is three different cleaning modes. There is an auto mode, which basically just goes around and cleans pretty much everywhere, just automatically. Then there's also an edge mode, which just goes around the edge of your room. So if you have things in the middle of your room, like a table or something, or you just wanna clean the outside. And then there is a spot cleaning mode. So say in the kitchen, you make a mess and you wanna clean a certain area, you can make it just go around that spot and clean it up. Now, something I was really surprised about is the speed of this thing. It's really quick. Like it goes around the room super fast and it cleans the room way quicker than most other vacuum cleaners. So if you do want like a fast clean, then this thing is rapid. So you should have no issue if you only want to clean for like maybe five or 10 minutes. You can actually surprisingly get like a small room done in that amount of time. Now I mentioned there was some additional sort of brushes and the side brush and filters. And if you're curious about when to change that, there's a really nice mode inside the app, which goes ahead and tells you when you need to change it. So it tells you how many hours you have left of using say the filter or the side brushes, and it will actually alert you when you need to go and change them. Now, something I was a little bit disappointed about was you can't tell a vacuum cleaner to go to a specific room. So if you do tell it to clean, it just sort of goes ahead and cleans your whole place. You can't specifically tell it to go to a room and that's pretty much because the whole mapping system and it doesn't have the LiDAR detection and everything like that, like the more premium vacuum cleaners. So it does sort of go ahead and just clean everywhere and it is integrated with Amazon Echo. So you can go ahead and tell it to, you know, start cleaning and return to the charging dock, but you can't tell it where to go and clean. Even in the app, it doesn't have any options. So you can only go ahead and tell it to clean so even if you make a mess in your bedroom, you're gonna have to wait for it to clean your entire downstairs floor. But I guess that's the sacrifice they had to make in order to keep the price down and also ensure that it had good performance. Now, a nice feature I like is that the vacuum cleaner does actually tell you what's going on. So it tells you if it's gonna go clean or if it's returning to the charger or if it's out of charge or if it gets stuck, it announces that. And even if it gets stuck and you lose it, you can actually click in the app and it will tell you where it is. In terms of the battery life, it does about 130 minutes and that's just over two hours, which is very impressive. Um, it does have quite a large battery and it takes about an hour and a half to charge up. So it's not too bad. Now, something I noticed inside the app is these boundary strips. Now they don't have those included in the box. You will need to get them separately, but they're actually really cool because you can place them around objects you don't want the vacuum cleaner to go near and then it will just stay away from them. So if you don't want it to go into a specific room, you can put it under your carpet near the door frame and it won't go into that room. Now, in terms of the sizing, it's about the same as most other Roomba type vacuum cleaners out there. Uh, they're all sort of a standard size, but it's about 3.1 inches tall. So it can fit in some tight spaces, which is actually nice. Obviously it depends on the height of your furniture and everything like that, but I actually find it is actually able to get into sort of the corners underneath of the cabinets in the kitchen and things. But yeah, that's really all I have to say about it. It's a great vacuum cleaner. It's a great price. It doesn't have all the functionality which the most expensive ones have, but it does actually have good performance and it does clean up very well. So that's pretty much it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Thank you for watching guys.